It's competition between his class and my yeah. class. So you're not only competing against the four teams in this class, but you're competing against the other teams. How many teams do you have in yours? Four. Four, so it's one out of eight. Okay, it's a great opportunity to bring the real life expertise in today. So as you saw from the invitation, Jason Price is here, and he's actually my former student. When I was a professor at Fordham, he took um, executive MBA uh, program there and uh, with his colleague Max Starkov, and they co-founded this Heps Digital. So Jason is an educator also, and you will soon see how, how he interacts with the students. And Akshay is here, and he's a graduate. You saw MS13. That's a good turnaround, you know, come back to the class, yeah. and get a job and get back to the class. And then Frederick Sherbert, uh, so Akshay I met here because he was, you know, very active student. Frederick and I met about a month ago in the Russian bath. He's a Finn, <laughs> well, he's a Finn and, uh, and that's a Wall Street one. So Finns have a, this group of uh, sauna enthusiasts and they get together once a month at the last Thursday. It's either 10th Street sauna last, last week and there was the fire, so you hardly could make it all, I would call it the smoke sauna. <laughs> and uh, so we started to talk about, and he's a, as you see, uh, he's a board member of the um, Omena Hotels. It's a very innovative concept, and do you know what Omena means in English? It's an apple. And so I thought that it's interesting to hear from him how the company has developed this concept, because you're developing a concept yourself for a Greenwich Hall. So to see what, what uh, this company and, and what type of competitive advantages they have in terms of value for customers and lower cost, and then uh, Jason and Akshay are going, to, are going to talk about the digital marketing and that big space out there where I think many of you will be relying on when you promote and market your concepts. So that's the first part. And the second part, I, I emailed them your decks and it's open Q&A. And uh, it's your opportunity to get free advice. I mean, they promise not to charge you. Is that still holding? They charge you. Yeah. What's that? What's your going rate for an hour? Uh, $200. $200. So, so you get it free no, here. For recent grads. Recent grads. So Jason, $2,000. So, so anyway. Depends on who's asking. Who's asking. So anyway, don't be shy. I mean, if, you, if you're wondering of anything about in your concepts, um, now is the time to ask. I might have one ask, turn down your laptops, you know, all your mobile devices. I returned from Cuba and it was so healthy, no access to internet. Mm. Janie was with us and you can actually learn more. So I, I'm actually demanding that not right now everybody puts down their computers. And, well, no, this time no. Take a piece of paper and pen. So, memorize. Memorize. Okay, so let's welcome Frederick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be back at NYU. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Thanks to some serious male bonding in, uh, in the Finnish sauna society. Uh, I, uh, I have a background in uh, in uh, behavioral economics. Uh, social scientist trying to understand. Uh, human behavior, psychology, etc. So that's my formal training, but uh, actually 20 years ago I started uh, uh, I started my own uh, hotel in my hometown in, in, in Finland on the west coast. Uh, there was a dorm, um, you know, this is a small town, 50,000 people. There's a dorm, and, and during the summers it was just standing empty middle of the center, a dorm standing empty, there's a lot of demand, it's kind of a vibrant summer city. Uh, I, I put these things together and I set up a, essentially a, a seasonal uh, accommodation service in, 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 this, uh, in, in this dorm. So that was 20 years ago, in between I did a lot of different things, but now I've been working for a Finnish uh, hotel chain for um, for, uh, for a while, I, I recently stepped down as the CEO. Uh, now I'm a member of the board. Uh, and 
I'm going to run through some very basic uh, uh, things about the history and, and the, the concept, perhaps to get you thinking about uh, about how to streamline a concept and how to be able to really, really kind of narrow down the key components of a concept instead of doing a lot of different things. And it's always a different, it, it's always a difficult, difficult thing. Um, so in terms of the thinking about concepts, it's uh, it's very important to keep it simple, right? So there's a few simple rules, and just try to to to, to stick to those. It's one thing to have it on uh, as an idea, but having seen the execution of a concept, it really gets messy out there. And if you don't have the concept rooted in a thoroughly thought through uh, framework, it, it, it might get messy once you start implementing. So this is the 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 story of, of Omena Hotels. Uh, so it's a remotely manned um, economy-ish segment hotel. Uh, in Finland, we don't have a formal star rating, but you know it's kind of a three three star uh, hotel. There is uh, it's a completely automated experience from the guest's perspective. You don't see a single human being throughout your your your, your guest journey. Our mission is to enable more people to stay in the city centers uh, hassle-free. So no queuing, no check-ins, no check-outs. You book, you pay, you, you, you stay, that's it. The business goal is, is, is broadly defined to be the, the most cost-effective and profitable uh, hotel company in Europe. And, and we, we get to that by, by using automation. So we're, we're in it to make money. Not to please people, we're in it to take people's money. We, you know, we are very much a for-profit and aggressively for-profit, uh, and that's our goal. It's founded by a very famous uh, Finnish entrepreneur and businessman, uh, Robert Grumble. Uh, he founded this uh, in 2002. He actually got awarded a business businessman of the year in Finland in 2003. Charismatic individual with a lot of experience from the hotel. Sector. He actually got admitted in uh, 1971 to Cornell, but he never ended up going because he thought it was just ridiculous to to, to go to school. 1997 or 70? I think it was 71. Yes. Yeah. Good choice. He didn't go because we didn't exist then. <laughs> yeah. He got he got into he, he okay. Yeah. That's 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 the story he keeps on telling us. <laughs> um, we have currently nine hotels, uh, 729 rooms, uh, all of these in Finland. It's an average kind of 80 rooms at a hotel, pretty small, you know, you know, it's a small country. Two hotels in Helsinki. Um, we operate the hotels with a proprietary uh, property management system. Uh, so we developed our own uh, IT system for, for the operation of this that you know, back in 2002 was very innovative. We didn't have a lot of these these uh, platforms out there that could actually do the things that we wanted to do. So we had to develop it from scratch. In terms of segmentation, um, it really depends on 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 weekday weekends, uh, as so often is the case. Uh, young weekenders, we have a lot of those. Uh, we have uh, families, as you will see, the rooms are really suitable for, for families. Every room fits four persons. Uh, but in the weeks, we have a lot of cost-conscious business travelers. So the concept is essentially a five-star location, a bed at a three-star price. We have prepayment rates only. We don't see any need for 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 any other arrangement nowadays people are perfectly happy with 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 with, with, with prepaying for a hotel room uh, we have self-service check-in and check-out uh, we have automatic lock configuration uh, we, we're using our um, hardwired electronic locks that are operating with a four digit pin code we have automatic customer messaging, so you'll get the PIN code the day of arrival. You'll get it on your email and in your phone as an SMS. No need for a fancy app or anything. It's just a four-digit code.
code. We have standard rooms. All rooms are always the same everywhere. It's like a Big Mac. You know, it's always the same. So there's no complications in terms of, of room allocation, etc. It's a very, very streamlined concept. Uh, we've outsourced essentially everything. Uh, cleaning, security, maintenance. We have zero personnel at the hotels and we're operating these 729 rooms, about 200,000 hotel nights a year with a staff of three. Again, you know, you're in a business development class, business, you know, business is all about profits, that's how you make profit. Uh, the Omina room uh, is going to be my last slide, uh, which essentially just kind of explains what the room looks like from the inside. Um, we developed this concept of a mini suite. So there's a mini suite, it, say, it fits four people. You have, you enter from, let's see if this works. So you enter here from the right, here's the door. You enter and you see the living room. That's the first part. This modular uh, shower uh, bathroom kind of blocks off this living space from, from the bed, uh, from the double bed. Here, behind here, there are two uh, foldable, foldable extra beds. So the idea is here is essentially that you could sleep four people or two couples without having eye contact. So you can have mom and pop doing whatever they want to do there, and you can have the kids fold out these beds and have the kids sleeping there. So it's perfectly suitable for four people. If you have four people that book the room, the beds are going to be folded when you arrive. Uh, if not, this space right here is, is, is very useful for, for, um, for you know, eating, for you know, organizing even a meeting for four people, etc. So we think this concept kind of fits in to a lot of the different segments that we're targeting here. So families, obviously, you know, a standard hotel room, a double room, it might be difficult to squeeze in an extra bed and there's extra fees for extra beds and all of that. For, for a business person that doesn't have necessarily an office, you know, you can organize meetings, negotiations, and this, it's not, it's not right by your bed, it's kind of a separate uh, seating area. And of course, for kind of young weekenders, you can get four people squeezed into a room and, and, and per, per, per person price is, is some of the places even like less than 999. So, so we're really working on, 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 on and essentially trying to deliver what we promised uh, five star bed and location uh, for the price of three stars. So yeah, that's it. Uh, short and, and concise, I'd love to hear comments, reactions to this. This is obviously you know, a concept developed in Finland. There are certain you know, peculiarities about the, the Scandinavian or Finnish market and also in terms of the business environment. One thing is that labor costs are really high. So so labor being expensive, you know, this is a really suitable concept to to to, to, to drive drive profits. You know, there might be other things that we need to consider, but now we've been doing this for over ten years uh, and we're we're um, we're um, we're expanding internationally and the US market is one of the markets that we're we're uh, we're looking at. Please. How do you stand to compete with Airbnb? So if you look at Airbnb, so remember, our concept is to always be in the city center, like literally, like right by Grand Central. And if you look at, and, and, and why is that important to us? Well, to us and our philosophy, the city provides the service. You go to a hotel <coughs> to sleep, and if you ask people, look at some of the Gallup, Polls in, in uh, the, uh, uh, some of the hospitality research being done, people would gladly trade off all, you know, especially in the economy setting, <coughs> all these things that 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 require space and staff. You know, there's a bar, there's a reception, there's all of these things that people <coughs> would gladly trade off for a cheaper price, as long as they're close to a really nice bar, a cafe, a restaurant, all of that. So, if you look at Airbnb. 
there aren't a lot of apartments right around Grand Central. So yeah, you, you know, get a cool apartment in Greenpoint, you know, Airbnb is perfect, but our idea, our, our, uh, we don't feel threatened by Airbnb because the supply of, of affordable, you know, downtown apartments on Airbnb is fairly, fairly, fairly small. Good question, though. Go ahead. How much do you charge on per room? Do your average rate? We charge, well, so average rate is, uh, is uh, 64 euros. But we have a fully automated pricing algorithm that is, is an adaptive machine learning algorithm that, that, that changes the price every minute. So again, we don't believe in the idea of having a revenue manager and we don't understand what yield management is. We, we want to have this fully automated. We don't have you know, time or patience with having someone, you know, a physical person doing any of, of, of that work. Uh, yes, please. Um, if you have no staff um, on ground, how do you troubleshoot if the guests are having issues or if there's issues with the rooms that you need to, you know, the So, uh, in the lobby, you enter the lobby, there's a phone, uh, free of charge, you can call it. There's also a tablet. Uh, we have 24-7 customer service, which is outsourced to um, a company that's experts on customer service. You know, again, going back to some of my behavioral economics background, you know, it's really, it's a science in itself to be, you know, you know, answering a phone and, and, and dealing with the individuals that are, are complaining. You know, we're not experts on that. We're hiring an expert firm to do that. We're paying for them to do that 24-7. And are you paying per call or is it just service fees? We, so we have a standard, we have a, we, have a, we have a base fee and then there's a volume uh, related adjustment. So especially in the summers, there's a lot of traffic, you know, they hire extra, but we have <coughs> Put a serious effort into to to um, to um, predictive modeling of all sorts. You know, we have a lot of data. Everything we do generates a lot of data, so we can predict the call volumes. So the the company is able to 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 adjust their 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 employment accordingly. Yes. How did you market the hotel since in the really beginning? People, it's kind of hard for people to accept the fact there's absolutely no business now. Yeah, no, it's fun. Yeah, it's it's um, it's hard, uh, and it was hard. Uh, I think in the beginning it was kind of so. Actually, in the beginning we had a flat rate anywhere in Finland. A flat rate, no matter how many people in the room, no matter when you booked, which is obviously like an absurd thing to have for uh, for 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 you know in the hospitality industry, but. But that was a way to kind of get people excited. Like that price is so much lower than anything <coughs> close to it. And then, you know, word starts to spread. You know, we have uh, great beds in the room. They're all produced in, 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 in Finland. You know, so you know, it's all about the product quality in the end. You know, location is great, but, but like, you know, the quality of the, the core product uh, is what I think convinced people uh, in the end. So, it certainly it was certainly a challenge, you know, 14, well, 13 years ago, but I think now people are just, you know, used to it. So now it would be a lot easier. Yes? By having zero you know, personnel like staff working on the hotel, there's <coughs> main reasons to cut down on cost, is that correct? Oh, sure. How, how much do you save about, you know, compared to a, a regular hotel that has regular staff Rotating the I don't know. I should I really. I, sh I should have those numbers. I, 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 I don't. Uh, so. Um, yeah, I mean, what, what the, what's the number for the economy segment? Do you remember here for labor in the US for the economy segment? What? Yeah, I really don't, but that's a very good. I can do to operate an economy hotel, you know, labor what percentage. percentage for labor? <coughs> labor cost. <coughs> It's hard to say because you have Texas, the cost of you know, labor in Texas is different than it is in New York. If there's economy hotels in New York, they probably have a higher operating cost than you know, a hotel in maybe in the Northwest. But I mean, from, I think your answer really is, you mentioned very beginning, you're the most profitable. Well, well, so from an, I guess from an EBITDA standpoint, you've got this huge return on the asset because your cost is so, so low. But along the lines of, I mean, I've got a bunch of like, little questions to ask. Like, cool. Um, 
No, no, like, like, for example, you mentioned prepaid, everything's prepaid. So yeah. there's no cancellation, there's no way to cancel. Well, actually, so we've had, we've been experimenting back and forth. We had, uh, um, we, we had cancellation. Uh, uh, cancellations, now we're back to, to, to just doing voucher uh, returns. And we're just constantly observing the, the kind of feedback we're, we're getting. But, about, um, but it's kind of, there's been a bit of a, a transition there. So this is kind of, you know, again, the concept, and then the execution is kind of going you know, to try to work out what's. What's what your actually. cancellation policy then? How do you, you know, when do you lose all the money? 24 hours before or? So you lose, you lose all the, the money uh, uh, by, by noon. The, the day of arrival. Yeah. Check-in uh, check is at 4 p.m. Okay. What was the said? You can't change it. You know, again, <coughs> we're, 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 we're not trying to do what a traditional hotel would do with, to please the customer in all certain. You know, people, people know that. People expect people don't expect them us to be flexible in terms of these things. They just expect a nice bed at a great location at a, you know, an unbeatable price. So that's a difficult trade-off for people that are trained in, 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 in customer service. I'm not. So with respect to the personnel issue, what about um, security? Like what if people turn it into their own party room? People oh, sure, yeah. How do you deal with that? No, no, so, so we have, uh, so yeah, we have uh, outsourced security. We have, we, we're, we have a lot of cameras all over the place. It, you know, it's like a prison, but we can't really see it. <laughs> but, but like the customer service staff, they have, they have a visual over, you know, several hundred cameras. Uh, uh, and now we're developing more sensor technologies as well to do, to do a bit more kind of, you know, preemptive. So in the lobbies, actually, that's a new, uh, it's a brand new thing. So in the lobbies, some sometimes, you know, sometimes there's some people, there's you know, a group of people that gathers there right before 4 p.m. Um, and 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 you know, someone's exiting the hotel and the door opens. So all of a sudden, there's like in this rather small space, there's some people, they haven't received, they, their codes aren't, the key codes aren't activated yet and they're standing there. So now we're doing sensors and, and, um, and loudspeakers to, to, uh, to, uh, So where's the headquarters? Is it like China and India or No, 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 the headquarters is in, no, no, no you gotta do it like the, you gotta have like Finnish, imagine getting like Finnish, Swedish, Russian right, right, and, right. and, and, and in China, so. so you, have, you have a pin number to get into the building and another pin number to get Same into Same pin number. Same pin number. Same pin number. And it all, you know, it starts to work at four. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and uh, so, so there's, uh, yeah, and, and then the security guards are doing, like, it's not an unmanned hotel, you know. We're just automating a lot of processes. But like, you know, there's on weekends, you know, you know, you know, right after checkout, there's a security guard in all hotels. And then around three, four, when the restaurant's closed, there's a security guard, you know. You don't need to have them on staff 24/7 to provide the same kind of service. Like it's not that we, like we know when we need a guard. You know, again, kind of predictive analytics. We can predict with with a high, high, uh, with a high, you know, accuracy. What you know, what kind of services we need when. So, <coughs> yes. So when you say you're outsourcing, it just it doesn't mean that um, those staff aren't available, but they're just out at a different location on queue. Well, they're just not on our payroll, so 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 again, you know, it's it's especially in a high labor cost environment, having a lot of people on your payroll is is bad for profitability. You know, it's business. So again, on what are the risks associated with having a lot of people on the payroll? Well, then you know, if they're you know, business is cyclical, and if you have a lot of costs and, and you know you know sales are low, you know, you're immediately being squeezed. You know, if you have outsourced contracts, you know that allows you to to be more more flexible. Yes, please. Then, uh, how many people do you have in your company except the Three. outsourced human resources? Three people. There's a CEO, Three. there's a hotel manager that essentially just travels around the country and makes sure that everything's in in, in, in place, and then there's a sales person. Well, would you have a finance person process the, the bills? The there's no bills. But it's prepayment. Well, yeah. So yeah, the you have the CEO. Electric bills, you have water bills. You who pays for that? You, someone has, you have a back office that manages. That. No, no, no. We don't have a back office. You have, yeah, we outsource accounting, you know. But 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 the CEO obviously 
you know, the CEO spends, you know, several minutes a day, you know, <laughs> clicking, <laughs> clicking on a computer, you know, <laughs> bills that need to get paid. But uh, of course, that's already, you know, that's all through a, a, an online accounting platform. Uh, and again, you know, we're paying for the volume. Again, we're trying to build a scalable business model here. And, and, and you know, like once you get those processes right, I'm not saying that we have all of them perfectly right, but at least on the conceptual level, I mean, we've been kind of fine tuning it for, for, for 12, 13 years. Uh, I think we're getting to a point where, where, where you know, you know the, the scalability is really going to. Did you say you own? I'm sorry, go ahead. Did you say you own the buildings? Or we don't, you don't own anything. We don't own anything except for the brand and the proprietary IT system, and then we have three people on staff. Then, uh, I guess you are expanding, and how many properties you can cover with three people in the corporate office? Well, there's no, there's no upper okay. limit. We're selling, we're, se we're selling, we're se selling, you know, two thirds of our sales, now we're a very established brand in Finland, so two thirds of our sales are through, you know, through the, our own website. It's a very, it's one of the more recognized brands in, 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 in you know, the hotel industry in Finland, and you can certainly attest to that. Uh, um, so, so, you know, so we have like 30, 40% through the external channels, and you know, you don't, there's no issues with scalability there, you know, you're just paying the commissions, and it's all through, through, uh, through, through integrations with, with, with all these OTAs, so, so it's not like, Adding ten hotels would need would need anything for us in terms of, of, of staff and, and, and processes. Oh, sh did you have a question? Yeah. So, how do you manage your outsourced personnel? How do you measure their performances? How do you manage? It? Great, great. That's the best question so far. It's really challenging. Outsourcing is a great idea for certain businesses, but actually doing it and assuring quality is uh, is, uh, is 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 very difficult. So we um, so we are taking a data-driven uh, approach. You know, every point of contact with customers are you know it, you know leaves a, a trace that we can use to to um, to um, to evaluate performance. So customer service, you know, call times. How long how long is a thread before you resolve the issue? You know, we have certain metrics that 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 can be used for that, and then. And then, you know, a lot of customer feedback, you know, we're constantly asking people for feedback, you know, there's an exit email, and you know, there's like lotteries for people to, to, to you know, where we're doing SMS, uh, snap polls, uh, you know, so there's all, uh, like a whole army of, of monitoring tools for product quality, like the rooms, what the rooms look like. Uh, our, uh, we're doing random spot checks uh, with, uh, with uh, actually, uh, yeah, so students, especially in the summertime, we have, have them do random spot checks, uh, checking both the quality of the cleaning, but also the quality of, of, the, of, of the rooms. So obviously, like the most, the most pissed off customers wouldn't even fill in a, in a questionnaire, right? So you need to do some, 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 some cross-validation of that, so. Um, so it's it's hard. Uh, so the, the short answer is, you know, focusing on monitoring tools uh, and and really producing actionable intelligence like constantly, uh, and then and then um, and then designing contracts in a way that there's punishments. So for instance, our cleaning contracts are such that that if the uh, um, that if um, if a customer complains, or if there's a certain proportion of customer complaints, then we get we get a reduction in the, the monthly cleaning bill. So designing contracts that would incentivize you know you know the cleaning organization in this case to, to really do their job is is, is something we were working on uh, quite a lot. Yes, go ahead. Oh wait, sorry. Are your rates um, per room or per person? They used to be per room, now they're per person. I think we might be going back to per person. Um, per so room, going back to per room. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Back to per room. But now currently it's per person. So there's essentially like a, a few percentage point increment per person. Okay, now let's say that 
I make a reservation and I prepay for one person and then I fit four people into the room, isn't that going to affect um, the cost for cleaning? But since it's not coming from you, it's coming, you know, it's being outsourced. That's that's one of the reasons we're, 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 we're dropping it. There's, you could get quite far with, with, uh, with designing the the system so that that doesn't happen a lot. Um, so you sell a room for, for for one, and there's four people. Um, but but it certainly does make things a bit more complicated. Uh, and so we're we're we're, we're going to be going well. We're constantly experimenting to see to to see to see whether whether how much we lose if we go back to the more simplified uh, version. So it's a, it's a question. Yes. Um, what's the biggest challenge you find, um, you know, expanding your brand because it's so different from traditional? Our biggest challenge is uh, our our biggest challenge is to find find. Uh, to find properties, uh, and I guess you know that's a function of of of, 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 of this being a, still a fairly novel concept. And if you have a uh, have a proper property that's suitable for a hotel, you know you would be considering your, your options. There, though, it's important to, man to 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 mention that we don't we don't need a hotel building. Most of our <coughs> hotels are office buildings. So yeah, again, downtown. In the cities, we're not we're not doing anything on the ground floor. So commercial space on the ground floor floor is just ideal for us. We don't even need consecutive floors. We could have the you know, third, seventh, and ninth floor for the customer. It doesn't make any difference. You show up through a door that kind of looks like a main entrance, but it's not a very you know it's not a lobby or anything. <coughs> you just enter the elevator and you push push the code for whatever floor you're going to. So it's a you know. Property owner, like it's 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 a it's a you know they're a tricky they're a tricky bunch. Uh, so um, so yeah, but I think people are uh, certainly more comfortable with the idea of of, of of you know you know when we started out, people were like, so how are you going to sell this thing? You need to have like sales staff and like you know how can you sell online only? Like that doesn't make any sense. So like fast forward ten years and it's just like a completely new world. So I think we're Certainly on the right side of some of some kind of big industry uh, trends, so you know, But we're not claiming that this is going to replace. Like this is we're talking about a very, you know, fairly small segment in, in, in terms of the of the of the hospitality industry. But so nine hotels, how many total rooms? Seven twenty-nine. Seven twenty-nine, and what's the occupancy? <coughs> occupancy average. Uh, annual oh. occupancy is. Um, I think it's 67. 67. Yeah. And that compares in Finland to what's the average? It's 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 slightly above average. Okay. A lot of variation between between you know the capital city, city yeah. and, and, yeah. and, and, and mm -hmm. some of the periphery. So 67. What breakout is OTA versus direct? So so in general, two thirds from our own, uh, and and then we have essentially split half. You know, booking a common Expedia. So about 30, 40% of your, 35% of your entire inventories are unsold or sold through the OTAs. Yes. And you have one salesperson. What's what? that salesperson doing? Is it just groups focusing well, on? Well, the person? salesperson is, is is drafting emails <coughs> and, and, and and you know you know posting, you know, checking checking reviews and posting posting you know so doing campaigns on Facebook and I mean, we're the biggest we're the biggest. Uh, uh, the biggest Facebook face, Facebook group of all the hotels in Finland, so we focused a lot of. Yeah, but Facebook is a customer service. Yeah, yeah but like, so it's, it's not like a sales. Like he's the person. He, he's the person on our end who interacts with customers, and like a sales is kind of, you know, part of that. But it, it, if you don't do any Google advertising. Oh sure, sure. We just try display to advertising. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we look, do, 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 do DRM SEO yeah. through through, through yeah. travel play. You know, it's just one of those things that like, we've been doing it for a while, uh, you know, and 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 it kind of works, and 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 you know, we're certainly not terribly happy with it, but. Uh, Do you use TravelClick in Europe or in New York or U.S. TravelClick service? 
which office do you use? Uh, in Europe. Because Travel Click outsources on the theme of outsourcing. Yeah. They tend to outsource some of their services. So. Yeah. No, no, I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure that's not the, 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 the optimal arrangement. No, I'd love to pick your brain on that. <laughs> Sure. Yes. Uh, you're oh, we're doing okay. Uh, two questions. First, so uh, I'm assuming that all your monitoring tools are proprietary. Uh, well, well, so yes and yes and no. You know, we're we're certainly certainly. In terms I'm assuming of the hardware is known by the software. No, no, but like so, you know, we certainly use Google Analytics. Uh, you know, so so we're relying on other uh, other sources as well. Uh, second question. So uh, you are asset like your business model is asset, right? So do you have a loyalty program in place? Are you gonna have a, are you gonna have a loyalty program? So we um, yeah, that's a good question. We we've, we've been playing around with it uh, a bit, but um, and, and and it's under development. Have been has been for. Uh, has been for for a few months now. We're uh, we're still not perfectly. Uh, we still haven't made a decision about like all the, the, the fine tuning. But currently, we don't have them. Because I feel that um, if I may be candid, I feel that a loyalty program is dependent a lot on superior customer service, and I'm I'm really intrigued by how you can deliver superior customer service without people on site. Oh sure, yeah. No, we're trying. We're not trying. We're delivering superior accommodation in the center of the city. We're not. You know, if that's if that, if that doesn't qualify superior to you, where you're right by like a Michelin restaurant and and you know breakfast is being served in in like a, new, a nice coffee shop with like real good coffee, not like the crappy hotel coffee. You know, it's like that's like the cities. Like we're you know the cities are providing superior services. You know, that's why we would never ever be anywhere. You know. Close to an airport or like anywhere on the highway, you know, that's just not this. Like the technology would certainly work for that, but not the, the concept of, of, of this particular hotel. Thank you. Okay. Please go ahead. <coughs> okay, so the hospitality industry is basically a service industry, and I, from your presentation, I see that you're all in it for the money, just strictly business, but do you think that? Taking all the service out of the service hospital out of the service industry is the best way to go. So you see, like, I find it, it's really fascinating when you're not when you're not indoctrinated into a, 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 to a certain discipline. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm, you know, my academic background is something completely different. And to be frank, I don't even understand what hospitality industry is. But you know, I'm sure you know. It's like it, you know, if I were you know Cornell or whatever, want to make claim on like a big discipline, I would call it something really vague and big. But 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 we're not we're not we're, we're we certainly don't fit in well with that traditional uh, categorization, and we're perfectly fine with that. So we're perfectly fine. But yes, we have had challenges when we were recruiting you know people. Um, Especially to to our customer service or the, the partner that we've outsourced it to, but we're involved also in recruiting, uh, where we have people coming on board that are really eager to please uh, customers, you know, straying away from the core product that we're delivering. We're not delivering a, a superior, you know, experience beyond, you know, sleeping in like an amazing bed with the amazing location with like soundproof walls and everything. So we're selling sleep, and you know, as it happens, kind of that's that's one of the kind of you know essential necessities. You could go without water, you could go without you know food even for a day or two, but sleep that's that's harder. Mm -hmm. So so that's essential. Everything else is just add-ons, as we see. All right. Thank, thank you. you. So, okay. so, uh, I guess the